the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. I was going to mention the church history on the back here. Thank you, Sister Norma. That was so wonderful to do today. We got people who work for the Lord, and I don't, I don't have to tell them what to do or, or give them ideas. They just, they, they really uh, astound me. And this is a beautiful history. Uh, we're 15 years now that we've been in this facility, and I thank the Lord for it. Thank God for all that He's done, His blessings. We were going through trying to clean out stuff. You've heard me preach about stuff. Mama's got stuff in her basement. And so we were trying to do some of that yesterday and come across old pictures. And You know, I always thought Sister Ethel was always old, but she looked pretty young in one of them pictures that I seen. And it might be that I'm getting, you know, it might be that I'm getting older or whatever. But we just thank God for how He's blessed us and for how God has brought us along. We started out to build, and that's not a mistake, we started out to build a picnic shelter. And when all the things was done, I probably ought not say this, but we were probably going to turn it into a fellowship hall later after everybody was gone. And, but the Holy Ghost began to direct some of my people. They said me, but he began to get people to come to me because I'll be honest with you, I won't build no church. I didn't want to go through, I didn't want to go through it. I just didn't want to build no church. And this one would come and say, I just feel like, Brother Doug, we need to build a church. The Holy Ghost is, and I, I began to pray in, in God, so God was in the whole arrangements. And I thank the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. I'll not be very long this morning. Some people say, Brother Doug, maybe you're new to the church. You have a lot of singing. I let them do all the singing they want to sing. We don't have service on Sunday night. So we go ahead and get it all done, one, one service. That's all right, is it? All right. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for the touch of your spirit and your presence that we feel in this house this morning. Let your word go forth. Help me to say only the things that are needed, nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name I pray. While you're turning to the book of Titus chapter 2, Pastor David spoke Wednesday night a very beautiful message, a very true message, and I hope you have ate and feasted upon it this week that we are in a fight. Church, we're in a fight against evil. The only way we're going to overcome evil and win this fight is to be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God. To have everything that God has for us. We're going to be looking at some commands that he gives to the church. Titus chapter 2 and verse 7, he says this, In all things, shew in thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary... Do you realize there is people of the contrary... Have you found that out? There's people that are not going to love you because you love God or because you go to church. There is people to the contrary, and because of that, he says on their part, they may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. I want to speak for just a few moments on commands to the church, and we can't do it without the touch and the anointing and the help of the Holy Ghost. Commands are regulating Christian brotherhood. He tells us some things here in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 9 and you'll want to look there with me and stay with me in Romans 12. He tells us things we ought to do. Some commands. When we become a child of God, our heart is changed. The same blood and the same cross that saves us is the same blood and cross that brings sanctification and life. Pastor David about preached my sermon Wednesday night, but that's all right. That lets me know the Holy Ghost is wanting these things said. We need to sanctify ourselves, but we can't do it in and of ourselves. We must open our hearts and our lives to the Holy Ghost of God, looking into the cross of Calvary, and by His precious blood, He will sanctify, set us apart, make us meet for the Master's use. You know there's places you ought not go. 
Pastor Doug, don't have to preach that on Sunday morning. You already know it. You know these things you ought not do. I don't have to tell you what they are. I don't have to clothesline preach. I don't have to call sin out because you already know why. Because that sanctifying power of God, if you allow it to, will work in your life and will lead you and will guide you and will direct you. There's some commands he gives here in verse 9. Listen. We'll not get through all these this morning. We'll just go as far as the Holy Ghost would allow us to. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. You see, we need a love that is real. In 1 Peter 22, you don't have to look there with me, but in 1 Peter 1 and 22, he says these words. Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth of the Spirit unto unflinched love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Love that is real. Love for your brother, love for your sister, concern one for another. Not constantly tearing one another down. Let me tell you, we are not in the will of Christ if we are constantly tearing one another down, constantly judging one another. What we need to do, if you're going to talk about me or you're going to talk about one of the members, what you need to do is get down on your knees and talk to God about that situation. You know, the reason we don't do that a lot of times is because when we begin to talk to God about somebody else, the Holy Ghost begins to say, what about you? Love that is real, to love one another, to care one for another. I told you a few Sundays ago, you might look at Pastor Doug and think, well, Pastor, don't you know how people live? Don't you know how them people do? And yet you show them love. I'm going to show them love. I'm going to let them know that I love them. I'm going to let them know that God loves them. I'm not patting them on the head and telling them their sin's all right. Christ doesn't do that. But I'm going to reach out with all the love and the care and the concern and the compassion that I can. Brother Doug, those folks will never come to the Lord. Well, how do you know they won't? I've seen it time and time again. Love one another. Love that is real, that is true. He said in this same verse that we to, are to abhor those things that are evil. In other words, we are to hate. We are to loathe all evil. Now wait just a moment, Brother Doug. You just said we should love everybody. This says the evil. You see, I don't love sin. Sin is a cancer. I've seen it destroy homes. I've seen it destroy kids. I've seen it destroy lives. And I hate sin with all that is within me. Christ shed upon the cross His blood that sin might be eradicated, that sin might be destroyed, that we might have victory over sin. And I hate sin, but I love the sinner. My heart with compassion looks to them, trying to lead them away and to get them from that cancer and let them know that there is a bomb in Gilead, that there is a healing flow, a blood that will wash every sin and every stain away and will make them as white as the driven snow. When our glory be to God. He tells us as we hate and despise evil, now listen, we are to cleave to God. What does he mean by that? We are to be cemented. We are to be glued to God. We are to be fastened to God. One of the things that really I see in this last day and time that people use God like a spire tire. Pay attention. See if you don't see it. They need God. They, and somebody mentioned in the Sunday school class this morning. They need God. They get Him out. They put Him on. Well, they get to the tire store and everything's all right. And they got new, four new tires finally on there. They throw God back in the trunk. 
And they don't have another thought about God until they need to cry out. That's not what he's... He's talking about cleaving to God, needing God. I want you to know before I get out of bed in the morning, it is because I know I'm a weak individual. I know I am a needy individual. I know what I am, that, that without Him I am nothing. And before I get out of that bed in the morning, I say, God, let me step out in Your grace. I don't want to roll over. I don't want my feet to hit the floor. I don't want to have to go face this world unless I know that I'm walking in your grace and in your goodness and I want him to be with me all through the day I am to be glued and fastened unto the things of God verse 10 he says this be kindly do you know there's something missing in this world in this last day and time and that's kindness kindness oh it stood out there People's been asking me when I had to use the cane, thank God I'm off of that thing. <laughs> Sister Linda, I'll bring yours back sometime. But thank God I'm off of that thing, don't have to carry it around anymore. But I told him, I said, you know, it's kind of restored my faith in humankind. You know, I just had to kind of keep it and I wouldn't really cripple without it. But people opened the door. I had little old ladies open the door and I'd say, no, 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 you, oh no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> kind. What's happened to kindness? Some churches. Let it never be in our church. God help us if, if we allow this. Some churches have no kindness in it. They are sitting by waiting to devour one another and to tire one another. We have enough of that in the world. We need to be kind one to another. Listen, being kindly, affectionate one to another with brotherly love. And honor, preferring one another. Lifting one another up. Being kind one to another. Not getting on the phone. Oh, I've seen some heads raised then. Well, you really don't hold them like that anymore, do you? You hold them like... Most of you hold them out like this and talk, or you do this. Not getting on the phone and running my brother or my sister down. Not getting on there and saying, oh, well, they've done this and they do that and they do that because of that. Let me just throw this in right quick. You might think it's innocent. But let me tell you, the devil will use that to destroy that individual. And it'll come back with bitterness and destroy you and it'll hurt the church when you do those things. Being kindly, affectionate one to another, lifting one another up in the Lord. If you think you see that speck in your brother's eye, then pray for them. Let me go on. With brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. You see, I'm so thankful that my Christian brothers and sisters are closer than me than a lot of blood tides. I'm so thankful that our church family, that we love one another, we care one for another, we honor, uh-oh, we prefer. Boy, that's something you don't see a whole lot in this day and time, is it? Do you know what that, is? And what that really means is to respect? To have respect one for another, to care one for another. Verse 11, not slowful in business, Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Slowful, lazy, carelessness. Not caring about the things of the Lord. Slowful about the things of God. He taught us not to be that way, but to be fervent in spirit. What does he mean when he says fervent in spirit? I believe he means that we are to have a zeal to the bullet point. Christ spoke to the church of the Laodiceans and He said, You are lukewarm. And He said, Because you are lukewarm, you make me sick. I wonder what He'd say to the church in this day and time. We are to be fervent in spirit. We are to be born over with the power and the presence and the anointing and the Spirit of God in our lives. Our Sunday school lesson this morning, he spoke about having priorities. Where is our priorities? Is God first and foremost in our priorities? We are to be fervent in spirit. We are to serve 
the Lord. All things that we do, we should do as unto the Lord. Whatever we're doing, we should do it as unto the Lord. Verse 12, and I'm going to hush this morning and we'll start again, the Lord willing, next Sunday. Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. Patient. Oh my. Well, Doug, I wish you'd have stopped before you got there. I just lifted one of my foot, feet up because my toes hurt so bad. Patient. Patient in tribulation. Continually instant in prayer. Rejoicing in hope. I'm going to just come across with this rejoicing and hope, and I'm going to close this morning, but I want you to realize this. Your hope, hear what I have to say. Catch this. Your hope should be a joy to you. Brother Doug, do you not know the world we live in? Sure I do. I'm not immune to it. I'm not in some out retire. I'm right there in the world with you. I go to a job every day. I face people every day. I see all the evil. I listen to the same news you listen to. I see the things that are going on and there is such evil in this world. But do I have to hang my head down? No. Do I have to wring my hands in despair and say there is no hope? No, because I have hope. I, I, I live in the same world. I've had them days when, when I go around, somebody comes in the shop and they've got a big smile on their face. Can I, be, can I be honest with you? You know, Pastor Doug's always honest with you. And they're on top of the world, and I've had every, every customer that can tell me off, every employee I've got ill, and every contractor upset, and I hear it from upstairs too. And they come in and they're grinning and whistling and I think, what are you so happy about? <laughs> but I'm glad that's when the Holy Ghost speaks to me. Come on. Amen. Oh, I know you're more holy, you're more righteous than me. You don't have to tell me after church how much better you are than me. I already know it. But that's when the Holy Ghost reminds me what are you looking down for? What is these things? The, these things, what, what do they matter? You have a blessed... Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost. You have a blessed hope. Brother Brandon, it is sure, it is steadfast. I don't care what ways are going on around me. I don't care what problems we are facing as a world, as a country, as a nation, as a state, as a county. My God is able. My foundation is sure, it is steadfast. And I rejoice in my hope. Father, mm. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. I thank you this morning, Lord, that we have that blessed hope, both sure and steadfast. This week, Lord, if time stands as things would pile upon us, help us, dear Lord, to forget those things and rejoice in that hope that we have in Christ Jesus as your child. I pray, Lord, if there's one here this morning that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that has not received you, that does not have that hope. Don't let this day pass without that hope. Heads bowed, eyes closed for just one moment. I'll not be very long. If you don't have that blessed hope this morning, if you don't know, know and have the assurance of your salvation, this altar is open this morning. If you need special prayer, have a concern, a situation for anything, this altar is open this morning.